Ever find yourself obsessively checking your mailbox for an important delivery? Or forget to check it for weeks because nothing fun is on its way? Well, I'm Curiously Cory, and today I'm going to show you how to build a sensor that can send you a text message or trigger a Home Assistant action when your mail has been delivered. The main components of this project are an ESP8266 variant, I'm using an ESP01, a limit switch, a couple of 1K resistors, and a 3.7 volt lithium battery. There are a lot of other options for the battery, but that's another video. If you're using an ESP01, you'll also need an FTDI USB to serial converter to program it. It's pretty easy to do this without a breadboard, but I'm using one here along with some headers so that I can easily disconnect the ESP01 for reprogramming later if I so choose. Lastly, I didn't use one here, but the 14500 batteries I used fit snugly in most AA battery holders, and I'd suggest using one over the method I used to get this project working. That said, a little tin foil and some tape did the trick for my prototype. We're going to start by programming the ESP8266. To do this, I set up a simple programming circuit on the breadboard. I made a little adapter to split the two rows of pins across the breadboard, but you can use male to female jumper wires in place of this. First, I used a 1K pull-up resistor on the reset pin, and connected the VCC to the positive power rail. Then, connected the FTDI ground to the breadboard ground rail and FTDI VCC to the breadboard positive rail. Make sure your FTDI is set to 3.3 volts. 5 volts can burn out these ESP01s quick. Next, connect the ESP ground pin and GPIO0 to the negative power rail. After that, we just have to connect the ESPRX to the FTDI TX, and the ESPTX to the FTDIRX. Then we can plug it in and we should be ready to program. If you're going to be uploading over and over again, you might want to add a jumper to the reset pin that you can reset the board with by briefly connecting it to ground at any time. Now plug your FTDI into the computer's USB and you're ready to program. Today I'm going to walk through the steps to have the mailbox sensor send a message using if this then that, but you can also find my sketch for home assistant integration via MQTT on the blog post in the description below. Before we upload the sketch, we're going to need to set up a new applet on if this then that. If you don't have an account, start by signing up for one. Once signed in, go to my applets, new applet. Click on this, then search for webhook and choose receive a web request. You can pick whatever you want for the event name, I chose Mailbox Opened. Just note it for later. After you click Create Trigger, you can now choose a that action. There's a lot of options here, from email to sending a tweet, or even turning on a smart switch, but we're going to select the SMS option. If this is your first time using If This Then That to send an SMS, you'll have to go through the SMS authorization steps. Now we can select Send Me an SMS, and you can use any custom message to alert yourself on the sensor's trigger. I'm simply going to type, mail has been delivered. Click create action and review everything looks good before clicking finish. Before returning to the sketch, we're going to need to find your API key. After finishing the applet, you should find yourself on the My Applet screen. Click on services, then search for webhooks. Click on webhooks, then when it loads, click on the documentation button. On this page, you'll find your webhook key, which you'll need to put in the sketch before uploading it to the ESP01. Now open up the Arduino IDE and load the mailbox sketch copied from my blog post or my GitHub repository. Copy the webhook key along with your event name, like mailbox opened, into the sketch. Before you click upload, go to tools, then open the serial monitor. Now click upload. If you get an ESP mem error, try unplugging the USB and plugging it back in again, or use the reset pin to reset the ESP while making sure GPIO0 is grounded. If all goes well, after the upload reaches 100%, the ESP01 will restart. You should see some output in the serial monitor like this. If you see gibberish, make sure your baud rate is set to 115200 and reset. Now you should see the wireless network mailbox sensor setup in an AP scan. Connect to the network and browse to 192.168.4.1 if your computer or phone doesn't take you there automatically. From here you can set up the Wi-Fi credentials for your device. Then when you save, it will restart. When it boots back up, it should trigger your if this then that applet, then go into deep sleep. You may notice something though. While the ESP may be in deep sleep, the power LED is still shining brightly red. Unfortunately, there's no way in the software to turn off the power LED, so we're going to need to desolder it because it's the difference between about 500 microamps and 50 microamps in deep sleep. This means that our battery should die of old age before the ESP01 drains its power. 
Now we can quickly solder together the rest of the components. Since I want to run the wiring up through the bottom of the mailbox, I'll solder in some male and female connectors between the ESP and the switch. Once everything is together, we can give it a quick test. Pressing the limit switch resets the ESP and... Presto! We get a notification! Now time to install it on my mailbox. I'm going to start by gluing the switch to the bottom of the box where opening the door will press against the limit switch. Then I'll run the wires up through a hole in the bottom of the mailbox and connect everything else inside where it will stay safe, secure, and dry. Now, after this runs for a week or two, I'd like to put the whole thing in a proper project box to really clean things up, and I'll probably replace the glue with some small machine screws and nuts. The other thing I'd change if I was to do this all again would be to use a reed switch instead of a limit switch, as I think I'd be able to trigger on the door being partially opened instead of fully opened. Using a PIR with a low quiescent current could be really fun too. So that's it! Now you should be getting mail delivery notifications right to your phone! Hopefully this got you thinking about all the different things you want to automate. If you have a home automation idea you'd like to see built, leave me a comment below. If you found this video to be useful, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to follow along with all the other fun things that I build, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. As always, happy hacking!